and just be like, look at that. This we make. Yeah, this thing doesn't currently make a ton of boost um, because, you know, it's not really a performance car. Hello, everybody. If you guys saw my last video, you know that we are now in possession of this 2002 Volkswagen Beetle. This car is equipped with the 1.8 liter turbocharged inline four. Uh, it has uh, five valves per cylinder, which is pretty cool. Uh, and just like any turbo car, this thing needs a boost gauge. I have a glow shift boost gauge here, and uh, I'm gonna wire it and uh, hook it up to this car. Uh, so we can see how much mad street cred we were pushing out of this engine. This gauge is one of the tinted seven color series uh, glow shift gauges. Glow shift gauges are pretty awesome. I've used them before. Um, this one's one of the tinted ones, so it's going to be darker in the day, but then uh, once it turns on, it'll like light up. But when the car's actually off, it'll just appear to be like black, which is pretty cool. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, well, I'm going to take the gauge out of the box. There's the gauge. See, so it has the wires and it's a mechanical gauge. So you actually have to run a boost line from the engine bay into the car. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extend these wires because they're only, they're only about a foot long. And we need longer than that, so I'm going to solder them together with much longer wire. See, it's got a pretty nice solder joint on there. It's nice and strong. I'm gonna slide a, a piece of heat shrink over it, like that. Then I'm gonna seal it with a match because I don't have a lighter. You can see now, it's nice and sealed, it's watertight. Now uh, I'm gonna do this with the rest of the wires and then we can get to actually wiring the gauge. All right, so next we're going to tap into a boost line, which this one right here is what we're going to use. So we're gonna get our utility knife and just cut that. Try and cut it as straight as possible. All right, so that's cut now. Go ahead and insert these. All right, so that line's nice and in there. Now we're gonna take the included uh, boost line that came with the kit. Just kind of slip that over that. It's got a little clip on it. And that clip's on there. It's on there nice and tight. All those are on there nice and tight. So I don't know if you can see it back there. Uh, I'll do my best to highlight it. Um, but that is the little plug that we're gonna take out and run our boost line through. Uh, originally, uh, with this chassis, the uh, cable-driven throttle body cars uh, that's where the cable came through, and uh, they didn't update the firewall uh, for the uh, electronic throttle bodies, so uh, that's that's just a little plug now. So we're going to take that out, and we're going to run our newly ran boost line. Uh, we're going to run that through there into the cab of the car. Now we're in the car, um, and there's this panel up here. Uh, that is where we're going to be mounting our gauge pod on. Uh, so in order to take that out, it literally just slides forward and uh, then lifts out. Sometimes these are stuck on there pretty good. There we go. So this comes out and we can modify it and put our uh, new uh, gauge pod on it. So here's how I have the uh, gauge pod mounted. You can see the boost gauge is just test fit in there. Have the wires running down here. Uh, so this is ready to reinstall. I can run all the wires down uh, to the fuse box uh, right here on the side of the car, uh, side of the dashboard rather, um, and the boost line up to the gauge. So the way that you're gonna run the wires, you're literally just gonna run them down there. Um, I don't know if you can see down there, but um, they're, it's, it just drops down uh, through the dashboard and you can run the wires down there to the fuse box and you can run the boost line up here from the engine bay. All right, so you can see how I have the uh, gauge pod mounted here. You can see the boost gauge there. 
Um, these two are currently unused, uh, but we'll probably end up putting a coolant and oil temperature gauge in those ones. Uh, but you can see the gauge, uh, it's daytime here. You can see the gauge is nice and black. Now you're gonna focus on wiring. Uh, all of the fuses I tapped into were in the uh, fuse panel right here on the driver's side of the dash. I'll flash up a little diagram that I made on how I wired it, um, but there's many ways on how you could wire your gauge for your car. Do note, however, mine was specifically for the glow shift boost gauge, and if you're using a different brand, it might be a little bit different. All right, so we're back in the car now. Uh, now with everything wired, when we put it on accessory mode, uh, it should light up. Uh, my apologies that it's flashing. It's not flashing in real life. Uh, that's just the way that the uh, camera picks it up. Um, so you can see that it's not really doing anything right now because the car's off. But if we go ahead and start it, feet, the exhaust leak. Um, you can see the uh, uh, needle went down. Uh, it's reading probably about 17, 18 uh, inches of mercury in the vacuum which is about normal. If we just tap the gas a little bit, you can see very responsive because it's a mechanical gauge. Um, and uh, yeah, you can see it's responsive and uh, it appears to be working. So we'll let the car get heated up and then we'll take it for a little test drive. One of my favorite things about this uh, gauge pod is that you can swivel the gauges. So you can see right now it's facing the, like the driver. And then if I want to so show the passenger how much mad street cred the turbo is making. I could just be like, look at that. You can see the gauge just, you know, putting around town, not doing any sort of performance driving. You can see it mostly stays into the vacuum as one would expect. The gauge is very responsive. The instant I do anything with my foot on the gas pedal, um, the needle immediately changes. So I'll give it a little bit of gas here and you can see see how much boost we make. Not, not very much boost yet. Um, this car, other than the gauge at this point, is bone stock and it's, it's all going to be up from here. Sorry, I definitely should have picked a better road to drive on. This one's uh, a little bit gravelly. Thing about glow shift gauges is they uh this specific one has seven color modes so you know we have your basic colors here uh, and then there's some other cool modes like let's see is this one of them yeah like this one it just cycles through the colors and this one should do it too yeah it just kind of fades through them pretty cool yeah, this thing doesn't currently make a ton of boost um, because, you know, it's not really a performance car. None of the 180s really were from the factory. Uh, like I said, this may, this car makes from the factory about 150 horsepower. And, uh, you know, this thing has 117,000 miles and it's 19 years old now. Uh, so it's probably considerably less than 150 horsepower. But we're going to get this thing back into tip-top running shape, uh, which I mean, it's really not bad for the mileage that's on it, but uh, a couple little little quirks and issues. Um, but once we get everything figured out with the car, um, you know, performance stuff will be coming. Uh, we already have some parts ordered uh, for this car, which are going to be pretty cool. And uh, you guys probably aren't going to want to miss. It'll be pretty pretty crazy for a beetle yeah i really didn't know what i was expecting um i was expecting about five psi and that's about what we're getting a little bit more a little bit less depending on uh, what gear you're in enjoyed and as always be sure to follow me on Instagram uh, for more uh, GTI and Ecotech Miata content and be sure to follow my girlfriend on Instagram for Beetle content. Uh, be sure to like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and be sure to subscribe and I will see you all next time. <laughs>